who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. <coughs> At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered, and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest were finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Amen. Firstly, thank you very much, Jenny, and thank you very much, Violet, for your prayers and your reading. Ruth chapter 2, this is the second in our series on Ruth. Now, apologies because it's a very long chapter, so I kept the reading to select parts, but I'm sure Violet thought that it was quite a long reading anyway. What I would suggest, though, is that you have a full read of the whole book when you get home. It is four chapters. Um, but it flows. It's a wonderful book. It's really describing the situations of all those involved. It would have been a bit like a soap opera of its time. There's death, there's loss, destruction, faith, love and goodness. Last week, Heather and the team told the story of chapter one in our all-age service. It was a tragic story of Elimelech and Naomi, Ruth, her daughter-in-law, and what happened to them following the death of Elimelech, Naomi's husband and their two sons. How Ruth chose to travel with a very bitter Naomi to Bethlehem, Naomi's old home, arriving just in time for the barley harvest, which oddly enough is around about this time here, and the events that followed on from that. It was about the decisions that they took and their faith. So we take up the story in chapter 2. The Lord is in all the detail. Ruth chapter 2, 1 to 4. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a wealthy, prominent, well-connected man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. There are not enough good things that could be said about Boaz. When the writer says that he was a worthy man, he means that he was a strong man, a man of character and strength. 
He was highly respected in the community. He was wealthy, but he was generous too. He looked after his workers and saw to it that justice prevailed. He was the perfect man for Ruth. Boaz, who also, it should be noted, was from the clan of Elimelech. So there's now a ray of hope when everything looked hopeless, we catch another glimpse of grace. It's not by accident that the writer tells us that little bit of information and that he will mention this just about every time Boaz's name comes up. Do you think that in Naomi's understandable bitterness after the loss of her husband and both her sons has been forgotten? There existed some relatives. We also are given hope as we follow the storyline that perhaps the writer brings us up brings up this point because just perhaps Boaz would be the redeemer that this family so desperately needed. God made provision for families who had lost loved ones. The principle of kinsman redeemer is presented in Deuteronomy 25 and also in Leviticus 25. Family members were basically to come to the rescue. If a wife was left a widow, she was to be cared for by the dead husband's brother. They were even to have children so the family name could continue. If land was sold during a crisis situation, it was to be bought back by the family members. These acts were to be voluntary by the next of kin. However, if you failed to redeem a widow or an orphan, that was looked at as great shame. When all others failed, Boaz would do the right thing. During the time of the judges, when everyone did what was right in their own eyes, there was someone who cared what the Lord said. In the day when rebellion and idol worship flourished, there was a man who was obedient to the Lord. How brightly Boaz shone in this day of rebellion and sin. We get a sense of this as we see the respect his workers have for him. It's one thing to be a Christian while other Christians are watching, but it's totally different to be a Christian when no one's watching. This is the picture we get of Boaz, a man of principle when he's being watched or not. Chapter 2, verse 4. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Boaz was a Christian businessman. You might not think they are so common nowadays, but in my experience, they're actually very abundant. Boaz cared what the Lord thought. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Ruth and Naomi are still in a bad situation. If this was on the telly, you'd probably get some emphatic music like at the end of EastEnders. Ruth's attitude is so different from that of Naomi's. While Naomi is stewing in her bitterness and self-centeredness, Ruth, who as Heather told us last week, has not lost her faith in God, takes the initiative to go and find him. In another part of the passage, and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain, after him in whom sight I shall find favour. And she said to her, go my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. Verse 2 is really interesting in its original. It literally says, And Ruth the unfavorable Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose, whose sight I shall find favor. The foreigner who comes from the people who have no favor will soon find favor from God. She must be trusting God for this favor. She has no reason to think that anyone would extend a foreigner favor, especially in the days of the judges. Gleaning was a practice that was set up by God to allow the poor foreigners to have food. We learn a few things about Ruth. She's humble enough to go and glean. She's also courageous in the sense that to go in a strange field to glean in a time when sin was running rampant could prove to be a dangerous undertaking. 
So we're a bit of background in Deuteronomy 24. It's when you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless and the widow. When you gather the grapes in your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterwards. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless and the widow. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. So God's reminding the Israelites that the reason they are not to completely strip the fields bare is that there were a time when God's people were in Egypt and they were the foreigners and food was scarce for them. To obey that text was to remember what the Lord had done for his people when they were the poor ones. For a foreigner, especially a female foreigner, to glean all alone was extremely dangerous. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimine. The writer of the book is using a literary device to show the readers that from Ruth's vantage point, there was nothing out of the ordinary going, going on. She went out to glean, and she finds herself in the field of Boaz. If you were to ask Ruth why she was in that particular field, she would have had no logical answer. Perhaps the field was the closest to her home. Perhaps it had more grain than the other fields. Who knows? She was there, <clears throat> but God had everything planned out in advance. His plan was working perfectly. From God's vantage point, she didn't just happen to be in Boaz's field. That's exactly how the Lord works in our lives. Proverbs 16.9 The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So the equation looks like this. We think, think through things and make decisions and plan our way. The way we plan is already in the realm of God's providence. He already has things planned out and they're going to happen. We know that in God's plan, there's nothing left to chance. As we work our way through this text, I want to see the kindness. I want you to see the kindness of Boaz. I also want us to get a glimpse of the grace of God at work. So in chapter 2, verses 5 to 23 that we read, short passage. Then Boaz said to his young man, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, she is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. <coughs> she said, please let me green, glean and gather up the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. So Boaz notices Ruth and inquires of the workers who she is. Boaz is a godly man and a bachelor. Consider what the God, Lord is doing here in these verses. He's playing matchmaker. He's working the details out in order that Boaz and Ruth join together as husband and wife. So why is he doing this? God has a saviour to bring into the world. Boaz and Ruth will become the great grandparents of King David. We know that our saviour, the Lord Jesus, comes from the line of King David. Ruth is just the type of girl a godly man looks for. She's committed, she's caring, she's humble. As a foreigner and a, as a widow, she has a right to walk into the field and begin to glean. However, she doesn't do things like that. She humbly asks permission first. Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. Boaz begins to care for Ruth. What's amazing in this story is that up until now, Ruth has no idea that Boaz was a relative of Elimelech. Another short passage. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? When you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have 
drawn. Ruth experiences the kindness of Boaz and begins to see the type of husband that a godly wife would like to have. She's overwhelmed by his kindness to her. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favour in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? It's important that we see this in its context. Ruth tells Naomi that she will go and glean in whatever field she experiences favour. By favour, we understand this as grace. It's like in Genesis when the writer is describing the wickedness of mankind and pauses to declare that Noah has found favour in God's sight. God has given Noah grace. Boaz is now being used as an instrument of God to extend grace to Ruth. Ruth is given unmerited grace. Boaz notices her. For some reason unknown to us in divine election, God has noticed us. We were foreigners and had no rights to the inheritance. But God, being rich in mercy, took notice of us. He found favour in God's sight. Boaz is really a picture of the Lord for us. In this, Ruth would become the bride match made in heaven the tide is changing God's providence is working as it has been all along for Ruth's good when the Lord shows us mercy and grace he doesn't just give us a little God is not penny pincher when it comes to showing his people favor he lavishes it upon us in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 8 it says blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in his love. He predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Let's look with me in the passage at how Boaz is lavishing grace upon Ruth. Boaz speaks kindly to her. I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. Ruth is invited in to eat. Come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine. She has more than enough and she ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. Boaz purposely supplies her with her food. Let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her and also pull out some from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean and do not rebuke her. Ruth has abundance. In verse 17, so she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an epaph of barley. Now, an epaph is 50 pounds, about 22 kilos for those of us who use metric. That's quite a lot of barley. She took it and she went up into the city. That's a lot for a lady to carry on her own. Her mother in law saw what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food had been left over after she'd been satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today? Where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, The man's name with whom I was working today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. So as we close out the chapter, there is one principle that is important to understand. Ruth asks Boaz why she should be experiencing such grace from his hand. As Boaz begins to respond, it almost sounds as if she is experiencing grace of the kindness she has shown her mother-in-law 
But I want us to see something very important in what Boaz says. So in verse 11, but Boaz answered her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. How you left your father and mother in your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. So God was caring for Ruth because she had taken refuge under his wing. She was the only one in the story so far who didn't try to take matters into her own hands and try to do things her way. We learned last week from Heather and the team. She was the only one who ran to God for security. She was the only one who kept her faith. Now Boaz is being used by God to care for Ruth. Boaz is in the wings which God is shielding this helpless foreigner. This truth is for us right now today. How does God want to use you as he has used Boaz? Who is it that you could show kindness to and be that instrument of God for them? God supplied Ruth food, but it was through the kindness of Boaz that he did it. The Lord can rain manna from heaven whenever he wants. Most of the time, though, he uses his people to meet need. Finally, a small question for us all. How will God use us to meet the needs of his people like he met Ruth's need. Thank you very much.